let's talk about how we interpret correlations. Just kind of giving a broad overview of what correlations means. This is kind of like if you've had a stats course, this is a review of some material. So typically, a correlation describes how two variables are related to one another. If as one changes, if the other one changes at the same time, they're correlated if, if they change in a predictable uh, way. And typically, we use R, the Pearson correlation coefficient, to describe a, a correlation. And it's always between minus 1 and plus 1. And so if you have an R that's like 1.5, Something's gone wrong. That doesn't make any sense. It's always going to be between minus one and plus one. Now, there's a couple main parts of uh, the uh, correlation. There's the sign of R, and that's going to be either positive or negative, and then there's the strength of R. So with the sign of R, if it's positive, that means as one goes up, the other does also. So like if... Uh, uh, if the dis, if you measure how far people run and then how thirsty they are, they're positively correlated because you get more thirsty the, the farther you run. So, or the example of height and shoe size, taller people tend to have larger shoe sizes. That'd be a positive correlation. And so it'd be between zero and one. A negative correlation means as one variable goes up, the other goes down. For example, the average hours slept each night and fatigue. If you're only sleeping six hours a night, your fatigue level is probably pretty high. Compared, and if uh, compared to people that are speaking, sleeping seven or eight hours a, a night. So that would be a negative correlation. As one goes up, the other goes down. Now, when we, we talk about is R significant, we test the significance of R. And we say that, aha, P is less than 0.05 meaning that there's less than a 5% chance that we could get this correlation from the sample if such a correlation did not uh, exist in the population. But when we, what, so what does it mean on the practical level when we say that R is significant? It means that we can be reasonably sure that there, that there is a positive or a negative uh, relationship. So if I say R equals 0.2, and it's significant, then I can be 95% sure that the real R, if we had tested everybody in the population, would be, have been greater than zero. It might not be exactly 0.2, but it would have been greater than zero because it's significant. And similarly, if we tested a correlation and we got minus 0.4 and it was significant, then I could be sure that uh, in the population, if we tested everybody, the correlation would be negative. It might be only minus 0.1, it might be minus 0.4 like we measured in the sample, or it might be minus 0.5, but I can be pretty sure that it's significant. Now, if it's not significant, that means, ooh, maybe it's zero. We're not sure it's negative, or we're not sure it's positive. We, we don't really know what direction it goes. So a significant R means that we can be sure of the direction that it goes in. So that's the first part of uh, uh, the R, whether it's got a minus sign in front of it or not. That's the sign of R. The second part is the strength of R. And that's going to go between 0 and 1. And so we look at the absolute value of R. We drop the uh, negative sign to see, or, or positive sign, both of them, to see how strong it is. And the rule of thumb for the strength of R is that if it's between 0.8 and 1, that's considered very strong. And you might be measuring the same thing twice. You might be wearing, measuring height and how tall somebody is. Um, those would be pretty strongly correlated. Very rarely are we going to get any psychological variables related to each other that, uh, that highly because there's just so much error when we measure things that when we measure even the exact same thing twice, they might only be they might only be correlated at 0.7 or 0.75 or 0.8 um, there. So between 0.6 and 0.8 is strong. Between 0.4 and 0.6 is moderate. Between 0.2 and 0.4 is weak. 
And that's how most psychological relation variables are related to each other. They're weak relationships because there are so many things affecting us that the influence of any one thing is fairly weak. And then between 0 and 0 0.2, we can say it's very weak. Now, it still might be noticeable in real life. So what do these things look like if we were to graph them out? When the correlation is perfect, when it's 1, all the dots are on the exact line that we're looking for. Um, they're, uh, it's a very strong correlation. 0.75 is a strong correlation, and all the dots are fairly close to the line. And then here we've got 0.39, which is kind of a, a weak to moderate uh, uh, correlation. And we can see the line still pretty well, but there's some of them that aren't very close to the line. Most are close to the line, but not all of them. And now here we have a weak correlation of 0.23, and without that line, we might struggle to see what the tendency was. 0.23, um, a good number are so close to the line, but most of them aren't too close. And so uh, the closer we get to zero, the more it looks like just random dots on the uh, on the graph. But if there is a trend, and it's more than what we would get just by chance, then the correlation would be significant, either positive, or if it was going down this way, it would be negative. Now, when we have R between two variables and we think that there's causation happening, there's four possible interpretations of uh, correlation, four possible causal interpretations. One that A causes B, or it could be B causes A. Just because they're correlated, we don't know which one's causing uh, each other. Um, but, and they could both be caused by a third variable. So a third factor could cause both A and B. Or the fourth possibility is the correlation is spurious. It's just the numbers that we pumped into Excel and we got some number, but in the population, the correlation doesn't really exist if we looked at, at everything together. So those are the four uh, possible causal uh, uh, explanations of correlation. A causes B, B causes A, a third factor causes both A and B, or that the correlation is spurious and it doesn't really exist in the population. Now, another important concept with uh, um, R is the variance or the variation that's explained by R squared. So if we have, say, R equals uh, 0.4, a pretty moderate um, rela uh, relationship, stronger than a lot of psychological relationships, R squared would be 0.4 times 0.4 equals 0.16 or 16%. So if we've got variables that are correlated by uh, uh, with a correlation of 0.4, then we can say that 16% of the change in one is associated with the change in others. For example, if we were looking at um, uh, uh, perceived organizational support and uh, organizational commitment, and the correlation was 0.4, 16% of the variation of our outcome variable, organizational commitment, is associated with the perceived organizational support. Now, that's 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 a, a big chunk, but it's not close to any to everything. 100% would be everything. So we can look at 1 minus r squared to get the variance explained by other factors. So if r was 0.4 and r squared was 0.16, 1 minus r squared would be 0.84, or 84%. So 84% of the variance in people's commitment to an organization can be is probably due to other things, not just the perceived organizational support. Maybe they like their coworkers. Maybe they've got a really great office. Maybe the work's really engaging. There's all kinds of things that can cause them to be uh, uh, committed to the organization besides their perception of how much the organization supports them. So that R squared tends to be uh, uh, pretty small because there are so many things that affect our outcome variables.